give me like 10 seconds of silence. I'm going to mute myself. So give me a sec to get out and then you can start in about 10 seconds. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Here I go. Hey guys, this is David. Welcome back behind the velvet rope. How is everybody doing today? And we are here with a very special guest all the way from California, Max Boyens, one of the newbies on Vanderpump Rules. How are you? I'm good. How are you today? Is that how most people introduce you these days? Yeah, newbie, you know, fresh blood. Yeah, that's pretty much I mean, my, my, my turnaround these days. There's, there's five of you, per se. So. Uh-huh. There's a lot of us. So what, I feel like there might be too many, but there are. There is a lot of us. There's a lot. We're going to talk about that too, because I've got a lot to say. So now, where are you now? You're you're back in California. Um, I, I'm still in California. I haven't left. I'm still in Los yeah. Angeles. I'm just at my apartment. You know, just self isolating as best I can. Um, you know, trying not to lose my mind. <laughs> Do you live alone or? I don't. I have a roommate, but he's actually still working, so I really don't see him that much anyway. So I'm just kind of just here, just hanging. It is good. It's a little crazy, right? So you've just been going like, what have you been doing to keep yourself busy? Um, you know, I kind of, at first I wasn't, at first I didn't think this was as real as it has become, you know, I was like, okay, we're going to closing down maybe for a couple weeks. So I was like, ah, you know, I was going to drink a lot and, you know, have fun and like, you know, play game, like, you know, zoom chat with my friends and this, you know, they kind of just have fun with it. I make the most of it. And I realized like, wow, this is going to be a long time of this. So I was like, made myself a schedule. I wake up. You know, I, uh, especially for my mental health, I started realizing that I was getting really depressed and really upset because, you know, I'm a, I, I run a bar six days, six nights a week. I'm used to being around so many people every night up till 4 a.m., like doing stuff, like, and then coming home exhausted. And now I'm like, I'm up till 4 a.m., not tired, laying in bed, staring at my ceiling, depressed, like, haven't seen anybody, haven't even had a drink at a bar. You know what I mean? It's just very, I've been doing this for eight years, you know, so it's very weird not to be doing what I do. I get it. So I, I mean, have, yeah, it's, yeah, well, I had to make hard. myself a schedule, you know, I had to make myself a schedule of wake up in the morning, you know, I, uh, I make my bed immediately. So it just makes me feel good about having a clean room. You know, I, uh, I read, you know, I saw a cool like video about that, about making your bed first thing. It's like, and then you, you know, you've already accomplished one thing in your day. So then I go about that, make breakfast, have coffee, try to do a little workout in my living room. You know, I don't know, little things like that just to make you feel good. I get it. I mean, I don't run a bar, but I am out at a bar a good six or probably seven nights a week, like living in New York. So like when this first started, everybody that I'm like friends with is just like, well, what are you going to do? Like you're out every night. How? And like in the, in, I mean, it's weird. Like I'm kind of like you, like the first half of this, I ate like pizza every day. I didn't work out. I'm like a home workout is not going to do it for me. Yeah. And yeah, I just like then same thing. I started doing this online boot camp class at like 6 a.m. Now I get up early. Same thing. It's just having a schedule. It's like whether I'm getting you right now. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah. No, it's good. That's good. I really feel like everyone should be doing that, making themselves a schedule and kind of sticking to it, because otherwise you're just going to you're just going to you're really it's like my mental like I had the best mental health day of my life yesterday. Like I woke up, I was very appreciative of everything. I was like, you know what, even though I'm like, I can't do anything with friends or this and that, I I was very, I just felt great. You know what I mean? I'm like, I feel good. I look good. Like, you know, life's good. And that's, that's I've, I've had a few days where I'm like, I'm happy. And I'm like, wait a second, you know? How are, yeah. Yeah. And it's very interesting. Like, you know, how are you happy? But yeah, that's because it's your mindset. You know what I mean? We just, we just got to overcome the, the weirdness of the situation. Kind of. But I hope that we will be out soon. So I what, what's happening with, the bar. So, I mean, like, obviously, Tom, Tom, sir, all of that's closed. And we'll get into a lot of other stuff, too. But, like, so yeah, what yeah, happened? Yeah. Like, what was the evolution of that? Like, one day, Tom and Tom were like, everybody go home. We might open. Um, it, was more of a, it was more of a Ken and Lisa call, you know, at the end of the day. It was more, you know, they they run majority of the restaurants on that block. So, um, you know, Ken, Ken um, Saturday night, we had a great Saturday night. And come Sunday morning, I'm getting a call from Ken saying, you know, we have to Legally, you know, every bar on Santa Monica Boulevard had to close doors by four o'clock that day on Sunday afternoon. So, you know, I, I 
the, the bar was literally about to open. It was like 2.30, I think. We opened at 3.30 on Sundays. And I get a call from Richardson, my amazing general assistant general manager. And he's like, hey, um, you got can you come in and help me close down? Like, we got to shut doors. I'm like, absolutely. So I go in. You know, we had to just take everything off the walls, put it all downstairs, lock it up, count everything, you know, just make sure everything looked good. And unfortunately, you know, that's say crazy. goodbye a second, you know, and, and I haven't been back since. And it's really just a bummer because that, that's been my life for two years now. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, Tom Tom really was my baby. You know, I opened that place. So it's just like very, it's very surreal and it's a bummer. It's really depressing. How long have you lived in LA? Like when did you were, you're not from LA, right? No. So I'm from San Diego, actually. It's not too oh. far, a couple hours, but um, yeah, I've lived in LA for a little over three years now. Um, I actually moved, I used to bartend and bar manage down in San Diego. And like, in, like I said, I've been doing this for a while. And, um, but I moved up here for a startup company, actually. I was like, you know what? I'm done bartending. I'm done doing this this restaurant scene. I don't want to be the 30-year-old, you know, server, you know, but there's nothing wrong with that. But I was just like, I, I, I need to do more. And so I moved up here for a startup company and that didn't work out. So your goal in life wasn't to be Jax Taylor? No, 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 no. Not that, not that. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so the startup uh, didn't work out. Yeah, so the start. So I moved out here for a startup company. I was I was working for the startup for about six months. On um, my first six months in LA, I was making terrible money. I was blowing through my savings. You know, startup. You know, they weren't able to pay well and this and that. And like it wasn't making. It just the way they were running it was not, not well. It was just tanking. So I finally leave, and I'm like, holy shit! I have like three hundred dollars in my bank account. I have rent due next week. I have no money. I'm freaking out. And I quit. And I go. Tau had just opened in Hollywood. You know, there's a new Tau and Beauty and Essex and all that here. And they had just opened maybe three days prior to that. So I run in there and I give them my resume and I have a great, you know, I've been bar managing, bartending. I have a, you know, I have a pretty good resume, restaurant resume. So they call me the next day and they're like, um, they're like, hey, come in for an interview. I'm like, amazing. This is great. So I go in for an interview and they're like, yeah, we really like you. But only one thing is we're only hiring a bar back or a busser. I'm like, oh my God, I needed money so bad. So I'm like, you know what? I know the bar really well. Be a bar back. Fuck it. And so I bar backed for, busted my ass for about three months. They made me a server, busted my ass as a server for about another three months. And they made me a manager there. And then I ended up hating it because it's so corporate. And um, I was about to move back to San Diego. I was like really kind of just like, I was going through a breakup with the girl and I was really like, depressed. And, I, and she also worked there. So it was just like, it was just a lot. And I was also like, just hated the, I didn't like, I'm not a corporate guy, you know, San Diego, the bar seems very mellow, very like yeah. family related, you know, the, the owners are very involved. Like it's, it's a different vibe in San Diego and it, but it's very serious. though at the same time, like we take our bar scene very serious in San Diego. So, um, yeah, I was just, wasn't having fun, you know, managing there, you got a microphone in your freaking ear all night. You're, you're walking around in a suit. I'm sweating. It's hot. People are idiots. It's just too much. And so I quit. And one of my bottle service girls was like, Hey, well, I have a friend who's, who's, uh, who's opening a new bar in, in, in West Hollywood uh, called Tom Tom. You should go check it out, you know, interview with them. I'm like, okay, I, I mean, I'll check it out. I mean, I'll check it out. And it was a GM at the time. And so I meet him. Cool dude. He's like, yeah, I'm looking for an AGM. So I'm like, all right. So I meet Ken. I interview with Ken, looks at my resume and he says, you know, how much are you making right now? I tell him, he's like, okay, I'll give you a little more right now. And if you do really well, I'll pay you more in the future. And I'm like, okay, cool. So he shakes my hand right there within 30 minutes of meeting the dude and, and hires me you know, Ken, great man, and gives me an opportunity to work at TomTom. Tom. The GM doesn't end up working out, you know, about a month and a half in. So then they make me the GM and then here we are. So. Wow. So Ken is really, was your first point of introduction. Yeah. Okay. I literally walk in wearing a suit and I see, you know, I, and I, I never watched the show. I don't know. I, I, I know who Lisa, I knew who Lisa Vanderpump was, you know, just because she has a huge name in LA. But I didn't really know Ken and I didn't know who he was. So I sat down with this man and we're talking, you know, good conversation. Very intimidating, of course, but it was good. And then, you know, gave me an opportunity. But you didn't know he was Lisa Vanderpump's husband or any of that? I, I really can't think about what I was thinking at the time, but I'm pretty almost positive I didn't. I had no idea. Wow. And yeah. Lisa has just a name in West Hollywood for like her restaurants, but you didn't know like, oh my God, this is Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and she's a big deal and all this other stuff. I didn't realize, I didn't realize how big of a deal she was. Like I knew she was a big deal. You know, I knew, I knew she was like, you know, considered a celebrity on top of having restaurants in LA. Like I knew of her. 
I definitely knew of it. You know, I've, I, I, my girlfriend in college definitely watched the show. I just did. I never did. So I think I watched like one episode with her when I, when I was like, I couldn't even tell you, but, um, yeah, I definitely knew of Lisa. I just, I wasn't aware of Ken. I was very just like, kind of like, okay, cool. And then, yeah, it was wild. That's good. So you really took the job because you needed a job and it wasn't, you know, like this is probably more of a question for someone who works at Sir, but like in your experience or knowledge, like do people, cause I would think people, if you're deciding on where to go work and you have two server jobs that you are offered, I would think that this is how my mind thinks. I would think that yeah. certain people would take the job at Sir to work there to eventually be on TV. That is just what I would think. Yeah, no, that wasn't at all. This was not at all. This I didn't even think about that. You know what I mean? I didn't. Even, I I didn't even. From my understanding, like you know, thinking oh, they only film at Sir. You know what I mean? Like right. why would they ever film at Tom Tom? Like I didn't even. It didn't. It didn't even come to a thought when I was interviewing with Ken. I just needed a job. I love the bar scene. I realized that Tao that one day I want to open my own bar, but I needed more experience. You know, and I was and so yeah, that's really was my goal. You know, I had nothing to do with being on television at all. So you, and it's probably more at, sorry, I bet you people go and work there. Like, I don't know if sure. you see that. Absolutely. I mean, just in LA in general, everyone, every server bartender, they're all, you know, trying to model or act. That's what they, you know, you ask them, you ask someone in the street, hey, what do you do? Oh, I'm an actor. No, you're actually a bartender, but yeah, you can go right. with that. It's fine. <laughs> right. And so I would think like yeah. a lot of people want to go work at Sir then as opposed to, you know, if you're going to work somewhere else like Tao, what's the For difference? Sure. You might be on yeah. TV there. So, yeah, especially if right? you're in LA. I mean, so did you meet Tom and Tom right away? Like, how did, like, when did that happen? Yeah, so um, I met Tom, like, we hadn't, so Tom Tom wasn't open yet. Ken hired me about a month prior to Tom Tom opening. There's a lot of, a couple of construction things going on. We started to hire a few more staff, training. There was a lot that needed to be done. So um, I was still, I put in my month notice at Tau. So I was still there. I was working nights at Tau and then going into Tom Tom in the morning and helping Leo, like, train staff, make schedules, order liquor. You know, we had a lot to do, get payroll going. I had to hire a bookkeeper. Um, there was a lot to do. So I was there during the day at night with, you know, also meeting Pandora, going over cocktails with her. She was asking me to order ingredients, this and that. And then, you know, Tom and, yeah, then I met Tom and Tom, Sandoval and Schwartz. They came in, you know, and I met Sandoval first and he was right from the jump. Very, very nice. Amazing dude. He's like, oh, you're the manager. Like, you're the new manager. Great. He like got his number immediately. Um, and then I met Schwartz, I want to say a couple of days later. And. You know, it was just after them coming into the bar so frequently, we just, you know, we get drinks sometimes. And it, it was just our friendship came very easy and quickly. Like they, I can consider them some of my best friends in L.A. now. You know, I see them every day now. They're my neighbors. They're my older brothers. They're my mentors. They're they're my guys. You know, like I got very blessed with a, a very solid friendship with those guys. That's good. And like, did they interview like, why did Ken hire you? You know what I mean? Like, it's up to us, too. Or is it just like, OK, you're the GM or you're the AGM. Like, let's just go with this. I think when it. I think when it came, comes to management, I think, you know, Sandoval and Schwartz can appreciate maybe the choices that Ken and Lisa make with that when it comes to running the restaurants, where Tom and Tom are very involved when it came to hiring bartenders and servers, which I think is great. But um, I, I think you can trust Ken and Lisa's judgment when it comes to hiring a manager. You know, they're not going to hire someone inexperienced or just with someone with a good looking face. They're going to hire someone that can really do the job because it's, at the end of the day, I'm running their business. You know, right. So they're going to yeah. hire someone that's really qualified and can do the job, but also has a pretty face. Uh, yeah. You know, you got to, I guess, I don't know. I mean, but it's really, LA, you know, yeah, it's LA, you know, but yeah, they want, they need, you, you got to have the resume when it comes to running a business like that, especially of, of you know, Ken and Lisa Vanderpump, it's, you need to have a good, res you got to have some experience because Ken really, Ken especially really expects his managers to be on their shit. That's true. I mean, it's it's an actual real job. Just, you know, you, yeah. people are seeing you on TV, you know. Yeah. Now, did you, so when you met Tom and Tom, like, did you know that they were, like, on Vanderpump Rules and they were, like... Well, yeah, yeah. So after working there for a little bit, I started understanding more what this was, you know. I, I started, you know, I realized, you know, oh, this is Tom and Tom from the, sh like, you know, the sh a show called Vanderpump Rules, this and that. Um, yeah, I knew I knew what they were doing, and I tried to kind of just keep my nose out. I didn't want to get involved with that. I really didn't, and that was another reason why I feel like people are so confused sometimes on the show and they see me. They're like, they think that I'm not really a general manager at Tom Tom, maybe, or like it's a, it's a friendship that's maybe not real between Sandoval and I. But like, who does guy come from? Because honestly, I never, 
I really respected Sandoval and Schwartz. I never, when I hung out with them, like we went on trips all the time together, you know, went to San Diego together for a couple of days. We went, you know, to Vegas together and this and that. I, I never, I didn't want to seem like I was using them. So I never took photos with them. I never like posted them on my social media. I never wanted them to ever feel like I was hanging out with them or doing what I was doing because I, of them being on a show. I was very, this from the jump, I wanted to make it very clear. Like I, I like you guys. We're having a good time. Let's just, and that's and they loved that, you know, because it was very genuine. Our friendship is very just real. Right. So, um, yeah. That makes sense. You know, and you actually really enjoyed hanging out with them. And then once you started working there, did you realize, I mean, now that you kind of knew they were on the show, like, you know, how many people come into Tom Tom? Like, I would imagine, like, looking for them. I mean, people want the pictures anyway. And in front of that kissing picture, like, that's the thing to do. But, like, I mean, once you started working there, are people just coming in every night being like, where's Tom and Tom? I mean, I would think so. I mean, it, yeah, absolutely. I mean, in the beginning, Tom, Sandoval and Schwartz were there all the time. You know, like, Sandoval, so this is, like, what they would do. Schwartz would come in the early shift because he's just kind of, like, a little more mellow. Like, you know, so Schwartz would come in, do the early shifts, you know, take pictures of people, say hello, and then Sandoval usually come in a little later and close up with me and, like, you know, say goodnight. Like, you know, they kind of had, they kind of had a set little situation they would do throughout the week. Um, so, yeah, it was cool. It, it's kind of slowed down with it. They just got, you know, once we started filming and things go on, they have, you know, Sandoval and Schwartz have a lot going on. So they can't be at the restaurant that much, but they do their best to be there. They really do. That's good. And like, what yeah. were your, other than Schwartz being more laid back, like what other differences did you see between the two? Like as far as like working styles and. Um, you know, Sandoval's, Sandoval's very passionate when it comes to cocktails in the bar and him and I have great, so that was, we had great conversations and ideas that we'd spitball back and forth each other with cocktail ideas or like things we need to change about the bar and this and that, where Schwartz was just more like, they're different, but the best, best differences that makes sense that's why they're so good together because they kind of balance each other out and but they're also the same it's i can't i honestly can't put it in the words and i feel like i'm honestly the perfect balance of that too because i can i can level out with shorts but i can also level like i can level out with sandal like i can understand both of them so i feel like that's why our friendship is so easy for us because i'm kind of like the i don't know the like you know the middle child between both that's good and then yeah. did you know any of the other people that are now in the new, like Danica, Charlie, Dana, or Brett? Like, did you know them before you got involved with the show or you really didn't know them? No, I did not know them. Um, so, I mean, I, I hired uh, Dana at Tom Tom as the hostess. So, like, you know, she was an employee of mine and then right. she moved over to the Sur. I, I never really go over to Sur, to be honest. Um, uh, it's, it's kind of like a different world over there. So I kind of just kind of just stick to my own business at Tom Tom. And, um, I knew of Danica. She like, I created a friendship with Danica actually, which is kind of interesting because I feel like she, that friendship, she kind of backfired on that, which was weird. Well, we're going to get but, into that too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, and then I met Brett, you know, they, they all started working at Sur and they would, they come in, you know, we stay open later, you know, we're more of a bar. So we're open until 2 a.m. So a lot of the Sir employees, that's how I meet a lot of them is they come in the Tom Tom afterwards. You know, I try to, I want them to like me. I want to like them. So I try to, you know, you know, we're, we should be a family, but it's also Sir is a very different world. It really is. So, you know. How, how do you think it's different? Um, I just think the energy is just a little, I think that maybe there's a lot of entitlement over it, sir. I'm not really sure what it is. You know, they film a lot there, you know, it gives, it def definitely gives them some credit. It's like, you know, we're a great restaurant on top of, we, you know, we film here, we're on TV more like this and that, or whatever it is. But then, you know, it's, I don't know, like I want, I'm all about when I started working at Tom Tom and thought this show, this bar was on TV. My goal, I wrote it on my, my goal list of the year of 2019. I remember I wrote about some goals and I wanted Tom Tom to not only be busy because it was on TV, which is great. And you know, that's going to bring in business, but I also wanted to create a bar that's going to be busy because that's going to be busy because of the employees that I hired, um, you know, great, giving great service, having great cocktails, uh, things coming out in a timely manner. You know, like I want it to be busy because people actually are like Tom Tom's rad, you know, like create regulars in Hollywood, not just all, not just only have uh, tourists, you know, trying to see, right. You know, so I wanted to create that environment of a bar that, like, I want, to, I want my friends to come to. My friends, want, you know, or, you know, I, I would love if more of the demographic of West Hollywood would come in more. You know, like, I wanted to create that energy for everyone to want to come in to Tom Tom. Like, what's, so, the, what's the percentage, like, now, do you think, like, what percent of tourists versus, like, the local West Hollywood or, like, L.A. folks? 
Honestly, I'm, I can confidently say that we've done, I, you know, my team and my staff has done a really good job of creating, um, you know, a, reg, a regular that want to come to the Tom Tom now, you know, we have a great DJ that comes in Friday, Saturday night, like the energy is great and people want to be there. Um, and it's, you know, of course, there's definitely the tourists that come in. Absolutely. But on top of that, there are people that like, there's people that I see every Friday, Saturday night when we're open, they come in, you know what I mean? And that's great. Like, I want that. We need to create that that regular that wants to come in the Tom Tom and, you know, see a certain bartender or see a certain server or have the same dish that they love or, you know, totally. so that, that's really important to me because that's what, that's what creates longevity in a business. What's your favorite drink on the menu? Um, I would have to say the doc holiday. It's a, uh, it's a reposado based drink. It's a little bit of spice, a little bit, you know, it's very mellow. It's kind of like a twist on a margarita. It's good. And what's the most popular? The most popular would have to be the Madam Butterfly, which is like a Lisa Vanderpump based cocktail. Very, it's you know, it's it's beautiful on top of it's great for you know the ladies. They love it. it has champagne, vodka in it. It's easy to drink. It's slightly sweet. It's sexy. It's everything that Lisa Vanderpump expects. So it's a very it's a very perfect cocktail that it sells very well. Well, I like just straight vodka, so I will pass on both yeah. of those. I. That's like when people ask me when they come to the restaurant, they're like, hey, Max, what should I get? I'm like, honestly, I'm a shot and a beer guy. So if you like, I do a shot of Reposado and I'll chase it with a beer. <laughs> I'm just such like, I want like a double Grey Goose pear or citron on the rocks with one yeah. or two limes. And I don't want any mixer or any sweetness or anything. Yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big mixology guy. So I appreciate that. But, you know, but after like two, you know, craft cocktails, I just want to move on to it. Like, let's get to the point. Are we drinking tonight? Or are we just going to sit here and spend $20 on craft cocktails? Totally. Yeah. I mean, that's my thing with like cock, like mixed drinks. I don't, I'd rather just cut to the chase myself. I don't, yeah. I mean, they do taste good, but then I'm like, all right, vodka has like way less calories. The healthy choice. Yeah, no, I, feel. I get it. I get it. I just, I definitely appreciate the art, you know. So. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly an yeah, art. I do love it. Yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? And fancy AF cocktails. That's a great yeah. book. Yeah, absolutely. I'm super. That I, that book was amazing. I think when Sandoval was putting together that cocktail, that cocktail book, I was over at his house almost every night till three o'clock in the morning, tasting some of his ideas, helping him. Um, I, you know, I there's. Yeah, it was a it was a ride for sure. I'm very I'm very stoked on that book. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. And I recommend everyone to have that in their in their in their in their, in their house. Really. Seriously, really. it's awesome. I went to a book signing when they came here to New York City. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, what else was I gonna ask you now? So the cocktails, I have just lost my train of thought. Um, so people come in, it's a mixture between Taurus and not Taurus. Oh, when when or did you meet Katie and Ariana? Like, you know, your friends at the times you're hanging out with them. Yeah. So actually I met the girls a little uh, deeper into our friendship. So like I had really established a friendship and then I met the girls. So it's actually kind of better that way. I feel like, because then the boys could have like been like, Hey, this is, I think it was better because then they actually appreciated our friendship and they understood it because I've been around a lot. And so, yeah, and I, I love Katie and Ariana. I, I, they're, they're also some of my close friends. Obviously, the boys, you know, those are my boys. But I love the girls. They're great. I, yeah, I have a great time with them. Do they get involved in, like, the business at all, like, coming in and you should do this? Or they're just like, we're not here for that reason. We're just here to kind of have a drink and support our husbands. Yeah, they're there just to support their their, their boys, you know. Uh, they come in, but they, uh, you know, with family, especially when their moms or dads are in town or something, they'll bring them in and, like, you're their brother. You know, they, they come in. So, but they definitely let, you know, Sandoval and Schwartz take the reins on that for sure. But So now how did you, so we have these five new people on Vanderpump Rules. Like, how did you become one of these five people? You know, you took the job for the right reasons. You're friends with them for the right reasons. You don't want pictures. Like, how did this, like, who approached you to be actually on the show? Um, so, you know, they, they obviously, when they started filming, they come up to me and they ask me like, Hey, are you comfortable being on camera? I'm like, yeah, no problem. Like, they're like, yeah, you know, you're the channel manager. So Tom and Tom are going to have scenes where they ask me like, you know, how are things are going or, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, they're going to want to film me. So I'm like, yeah, I have no problem doing that. And I just started getting, I just started filming more and more throughout the year. And, and then they finally were just like, Hey, this is going really well. Um, we want you to be on the show. And I'm like, okay, yeah, let's, let's do it. I guess, you know, I really, yeah, I, I don't know. It was very wild. So, and, it, and who, who approached you? Was it like Tom and Tom or like Lisa production? 
uh, production, Lisa, you know, it was more like more on that end. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe Tom and Tom said something on the side, but as far as like, you know, that it was more of like, you know, they saw how genuine our friendship was on camera. I was, I was assume, I'm assuming, I don't, I don't know. I don't really have the answers for that. I don't know what happened, but I just know that I was just doing my job, you know, and, and going out with them and doing this and that, you know, having, having times where they filmed me and things just went well, you know. And at this point, you really didn't know anyone except like Tom, Tom, Ariana, Katie, and Dana, because Dana worked at Tom, Tom. Um, well, when we started filming, I think even prior, you know, uh, Brett was coming around Tom, Tom, and I, I definitely had a friendship with Danica because even prior to filming, like she would come in this Tom, Tom all the time. Like I had, a fr- I, I thought we were friends, you know, like we, we were totally cool. You know, uh, she would come in, she'd come with her friend, she'd ask for like a table for, you know, birthday parties. And that I'd take care of her. I was like, yeah, I got you. Don't worry. Like, even when we're fully booked, I'll take care of you. Like, you're, you're cool. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I had a friendship with them, especially because, you know, I'm pretty close with Ariana's brother, Jeremy, and, you know, those, you know, over at Sir. So they, they come over, you know. Totally. And, yeah. So now you're on the show, you're filming scenes was before we get into some specifics like was filming like what you expected or were you like holy shit there's like a lot of fucking drama here what the hell's going on um it was a little bit of both i mean yeah no it's definitely actually unexpected you know my first time uh i was terrified being on camera i was very scared and i and i think that um you know i've read things where it seems like i'm acting or something but i really just think it comes off that i'm just fucking terrified to be on camera like i'm not acting i'm just like don't know what to say sometimes you know like i'm just in my head i'm like i'm t- like this is weird this is different for me i'm not i'm not 18 yeah. i'm not i'm not i'm not uh i don't know what i'm doing you know so um yeah it was definitely terrifying on top of yeah there's a lot of drama and i'm just a big person of avoiding drama i don't like drama at all i don't hold grudges i don't even know how i get mad for like 24 hours and like after i'm like i don't have the energy to do it anymore i'm like i don't want to be mad it's just stupid right so, or it's sometimes hard to do things like this. You know, it's definitely hard. Is is that what, I mean, because I haven't, I, I don't think it seems like you're acting. Out of all five of you, I wouldn't, if you're just taking, I don't think. You, I yeah, wouldn't. I don't know. I think I, maybe I just read into a couple too many comments, you know, but yeah, I just, it, it's just, it's scary sometimes, you know, it's just, it's just interesting. It's different. I don't know, like. Uh, I feel like sometimes I'm pretty quick on my feet and witty. And then some, and then right when we're filming, I'm like, I'm, a, uh, I'm an idiot. So I don't know. Do you get a lot of, cause I mean, people have nothing better to do with their time. And most people who are going to comment, it's mostly negative. Like, do you feed it? Like, I don't, I haven't read any of your comments. Like, do you get a lot of like negative comments and um, do you feed into it? Or are you like, I have to start just ignoring all this? Um, well, thankfully I have leather skin. I was definitely, I definitely am the guy that like, you know, I grew up in a friend group in high school with friends that we all make fun of each, you know, we all, you got to just have leather skin, man. You can't, you can't make fun of somebody and can't expect to get made fun back. And that's what life's about. You know what I mean? So that's good. It's, it's all fun. And I'd have, thankfully I have leather skin and I know who I am and I have a great uh, circle of friends, a great family. Like I'm good. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to care about, you know, Samantha that's good. And, in Arkansas talking about me you know what I mean seriously so, who's sitting in like a basement somewhere and like yeah you know they're gonna have their opinions and I do value them and I and and, and I, you know I'm very grateful that I have people that have great things to say about me you know what I mean so it's just uh you know it's, it's gonna happen this is part of being on tv I totally understand totally that's good that's a good attitude it takes some people years to get there you know it is what I mean dude it is what you got to just take it you just got to take it with a grain of salt like okay, you know, if the people don't like me, okay, I'm sorry, you know, I hopefully I can change your mind. But if I can't, oh, well, totally. So with your storyline in particular, we've one of the things we saw you in right away was this quote, unquote, for lack of a better word, love triangle, you and Dana and Sheena. So tell us about that. Um, I would I don't know if I'd call it a love triangle, you know, I think Sheena and I have kind of had moved forward from our relationship. And now we were friends. You know, and maybe there was a little bit of resentment that we had towards each other, but we tried our best to like, we realized that we're better off as friends, you know, like, and now, and now to this day, we're amazing friends. Like I, I can literally say, I love Sheena. She's very close to me. She's and amazing. I'm, amazing. You know she's what I mean? She's awesome. She's, great, she's so genuine and such a good heart. And that's just, you know, that's hard to come across, especially in LA and being someone that's on TV. I, I really appreciate Sheena, but um, yeah, you know, I don't think I would call it a love triangle. I think it was just kind of like, uh came out of left field for a lot of people and just kind of 
maybe threw Sheena off of, you know, and this, you know, who's this new chick and this and that, but I don't think it was any sort of jealousy. I don't, I mean, I don't know. I just, I think it was just kind of weird and like, who is this girl and why is this happening kind of thing. And then yeah. Dana, tell us about Dana. So she leaves Tom Tom and she starts at Sir. And now you guys feel like it's time that you can maybe go on a date. And yeah, you seem you to know, like her. Can, yeah. You know, I, I, I thought Dana was amazing. You know, she's, she's, yeah, she is amazing. She's great, but she's, you know, there's also just some things, you know, there's just a lot of drama tied into what was going on. And I tried my best to be honest with the things that I had done in my past. You know what I mean? You got to, if you're going to start dating somebody, I'd be like, I don't want, I didn't want her to be blindsided going over to Sir and figuring out this story and that story or whatever. And so I tried my best to be honest and I was very honest and there was just still things that just tainted that relationship. And again, like I said, drama is the last thing I want. And that's why it just, it wasn't for me. You know what I mean? I've got to take a step back. Totally. So, and what, how is your relationship with her today? It's, you guys don't speak, you're friends. Uh, we were, we're on and off, you know, we try our best to be friends and then uh, emotions get heavy, you know, it's just, it, we try our best. It's, we're doing what we can, lack of a better word, you know, so, uh, yeah. And technically on the show, now we, we are at the point where we see you in a second love triangle, for lack of a better word, with her and you and Brett. So what was yeah. that like? I mean, I guess at that point you were still interested in Dana. Ish. I mean, I was interested. You know, I had I had feelings for Dana, of course, but I just I just knew that it just wasn't going to happen right now. I just I just uh, I just I, yeah, I couldn't do it. I don't know. I just emotionally, it just wasn't for me at the time. And but it also was just like, you know, I didn't want people to think that I was telling her that she could like being like uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like I owned her. Like she couldn't go date anyone or hook up with anybody. I didn't care. You know, I was doing my thing. As you see, I went to Vegas and I had a great time, but. Uh, yes, you did. That was a really funny scene when Lisa called you and that person yeah, was in your bed. And that was a very stressful scene, but um, it was fun and a good time, but you know, I'm doing my thing and I'm never going to, you can't hook up a bread. It was just like, you could, she could have had a boyfriend immediately as, as the time that we broke up. I don't care. She could have been married. What you moved on. Cool. I, we're good. But it was a fact it's like, Dana, this is my friend. Like, I brought in Brett as the, like, I brought him in. Like, I really loved this guy, you know? I brought him to San Diego to meet some of my best friends. I brought him in my circle. Like, you know, I, I, I was really trying to bring him in as a friend, and he's a great dude. And I saw, like, you know what I mean? I was like, we had some really in-depth conversations. Like, you know, driving two hours down to San Diego, we poured our hearts out to each other about our previous relationships, this and that. And I felt kind of like, this is lame, guys. This is kind of like, someone that like I really created a friendship with, you're just going to go and hook up with him. You can't like go hook up with a random bartender at Sir. It has to be him. Right. So, so you were, where you were more out, mad you know? that it was Brett versus the fact that Dana was hooking up with someone. It was because it was Brett. Yeah. You know, it's just like this, someone that's close to me. Like what do boys do when they get together? or just friends. You know, they talk about maybe their last, their last hookup. Right. I mean, that's what we do. We talk about something we're excited about, you know, and I'm sorry. The last thing I want to hear about when I go get drinks with Brett is him hooking up with Dana. Because that's, I've been there and I don't, it's just weird. It was weird. It was just kind of, you know, I mean, it's uncomfortable. That's all it is. That makes sense. And then like, did that cause problems between you and Brett or it just kind of died down? You know, I tried my best not to let it bother me. Um, and I think as you, you know, you guys are just gonna have to watch the next couple episodes to see where that unfolds. But um, it just, you know, I tried my best to not let it bother. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a jealous person. My dad always told me, you know, being jealous is the ugliest characteristic. Never be jealous. You know, never beg someone to be with you and never be jealous. So those are two things that I pride myself in. Um, I've made the mistake of begging someone to be with me before, but <laughs> being jealous, I have not. You know, I try my best not to do. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not cute. No, it's not cute. It's not a good thing. I mean, that's good too. That's a hard thing to to kind of accomplish and then talk to us about Danica. Cause she seems to be saying that you're a fuck boy. Brett's a fuck boy. Danica's like on a mission over here. Yeah. I don't know what Danica's deal is. I really don't, you know, it's kind of unfortunate because, you know, I created a friendship with Danica. She, you know, she's calling me a fuck boy from previous experiences of, you know, I, 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 unfortunately, not even unfortunately, I've hooked up with some of her friends before. I really have, you know, and those are friends that she's introduced me to saying, Max, my friend thinks you're hot. It's like giving a dog a bone. Like, okay, your friend thinks I'm hot and she's hot. I'm not going to not like not go after that. Like that's yeah. and I'm single. That's crazy. And, but then what, she, what does she do? She goes around and tells everyone that I'm a fuck boy for doing it afterwards. So it's like, 
it's like malicious at this point. It's like you're bringing in, you come into my into my work, you you know, you act like you're my friend, you throw your friends at me, and your friend. And this is the other thing. I'm friend. All of her friends that I previously hooked up with, I'm close to till this day. They don't have any animosity or problem with me. I can call them right now and be like, "Hey, how was your day?" You know, we're friends. We knew what we were doing. We were like, we were very all like her friends I hooked up with were very like under like we knew what we we're doing. We we're hooking up. You know what I mean? And they're my friends now. So like for Danica to go and be like, "You're a fuck boy," and this and that, I'm like, "Your friends don't think that." That's very interesting because we're cool. So where are you coming off with this? Yeah, it's just weird. It's just weird. I mean, do you think it's like legitimate? That's how she feels, or do you think there's any part of it that's like, uh, here are the cameras, and I have my moment? Um, I mean, let's just say when the cameras weren't up, she wasn't talking about me, so I don't understand why it's an issue now. You know what I mean? So that's all I have to say. It's just kind of like, what do you like? Okay, you're obviously you're you're looking for something, and it's just a little ridiculous. You're just you're, yeah. Do you speak to her at all now? I mean, again, I try to be cool with her and she just keeps, she just keeps backfiring and she just keeps fucking up. You know what I mean? Like I'm trying my best to be cool with you and move on and like forgive you because you also have given out false information on a show on national television now that has made me look like a complete shithead, you know, right. saying that I did this and that. She's, she's literally said things that aren't even true. I'm like, when the hell did I take two girls home from Tom Tom? You're saying, you're saying I had a threesome that it's awesome. Where was I? Because that's not at all what happened. And I never did that. So I don't know. This is shit she says. I'm just like, where did you get this information, dude? Right. And it made me look bad now. Like, what do your parents think of you being on the show? Like, do they feed into all that? Like, what the fuck? Or are they just like, we're so happy you're on the show? Um, I don't think it's anything about being happy, but they're also not upset about it. You know, my mom think me, you know, my mom's my biggest fan and hasn't since I was a kid. I'm, I'm my mom's only child. So like my mom is whatever, you know, I, I'm honestly, I'm, I, I have a great relationship with my father and my mom. So they're cool you know like you know my dad thinks it's hilarious he just watches it and he just says he just laughs his ass off and my mom watches it and she gets, goes like oh i'm max but she also is like oh it's my baby so i don't know i don't know how it works but like like when they see the scene at like vegas and like there's this little hand sticking out of the bed like that's kind of funny oh it's no my mom texts me immediately and she says that was the funniest shit i've ever seen you know what i mean like you know we're we're adults here i'm an adult yeah. now it's not like you know my You're mom single. knows what yeah she knows what's going on so and my dad thinks it's funny and he's it's all good. It is it's all funny. fun and game. Yeah. It is funny. So, and what is your relationship like with Brett? You guys are still cool now, still friends, or? Um, we had our, we, you know, we had a little bit of a falling out with the Dana thing, but we, you know, we, I, I, like I said, I can't hold a grudge. I hate, I don't like, I have no reason not to like anybody unless you turn, unless you talk poorly of me. Like, I'm the kind of person that doesn't like, you know, I feel like people in LA, especially that just don't like somebody because of what they've heard about that person or just from seeing them. You know what I mean? I give everyone a chance. That's how James, like, imagine James, everyone talks poorly about James from his past reputation. And James came in the, and James is one of my close friends. Now I fucking love James Kennedy. That's one of my, one of my guys. You know what I mean? I, I was like, I don't give a shit what people say about this dude. He's fucking cool. And he's nice and he's genuine. You know what I mean? And whatever, you know what I mean? If we did, if we all just based each other's opinions off what other people say about them and not really gave them a chance, we'd hate everybody, dude. You know what totally. I mean? Totally. So, so you're close just, with James and Raquel. I'm not so close with Raquel. I definitely have hung out with Raquel a bunch. You know, she's always around. But, like, you know, I'm very close with James. I've gone to sporting events with him. You know, Coachella last year, he was with us. I've gone to dinners with him. Yeah, he's, he's my friend. He's a good dude. You know what I mean? And he's, he's been – and he's done so much. This, like, I, I'm so proud of that guy. He's killing it with his music. He's been sober. Like, he's really been taking everything so seriously. And I, I honestly, like, I text him all the time telling him how proud I am of him. You know what I mean? Like, James is killing it. And like really being, is. being on this really show sober, it. being on Vanderpump Rules sober is, I don't know how you do it, really. So that's yeah. an accomplishment. No, what he's, if, he's, done, he's doing it. He's doing it. And I'm really proud of him. That's good. Like, what about, did you feel like there was a divide between the old cast and the new cast? Like, did you feel like no one wanted to welcome you? No one wanted to talk to you? Because like, I've heard things like that, you know, like, did they just, if they had to film with you, so be it but they really want um, nothing to do with any of you other than that? I mean, this is a thing. I was around from the beginning before we even started filming, so it wasn't weird for me to be there. It was like, you know, like, have I been around Lala a lot? No, but she know, I'm sure she knows who I am. She's been in Tom Tom. She knows I'm the GM. Like, you know, everyone knows who I am. I'm not just, like, thrown, to the, thrown in like Charlie is or this and or, like, you know, like, I'm not thrown into the mix, kind of like, okay, here's a server that works at server. Let's see how they do. 
right. or whatever. You know what I, mean? I don't know, but it's also, I've been there. So I, I've been around. I think it's different than like Charlie. I mean, even Dana too, like she's been around. So maybe you guys have a different. Dana, you know, I think everyone was kind of just like, you know, we, we, they have to try something, you know what I mean? They have to try something new. You know, these guys, the thing is, is we've all crossed paths, like the, you know, the OGs and the newbies, like we've all crossed paths and we know of each other. I just don't think they were so, you know, we don't have never filmed with each other. So that's a whole new world and a whole new light on things. So that's where things can get a little weird. But other right. than that, we all know, we all knew who each other were. So you've had nothing like from Wawa, like in real life, like no shade or anything like that, where like she doesn't want to speak to you or not you in particular, uh, like just because you're in this new category. I don't know. I mean, I've heard things here and there, and that's just, I, I just, you know, I respect Randall, so I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. You know, Randall's one of my close friends now, too, so I'm, I have no disrespect to say, but I just, you know, I, I think everyone has their opinions of each other. If we don't hang out a lot, and you hear, you know, like I said, we base opinions off what we hear, and I think with some of the OGs, if they hear something about someone, they're just going to still base their opinion, and I haven't, I, I'm confidently can say everyone that if you put me in a room with you at least for, you know, 30 minutes, you're going to like me because I don't have any you know, I, I, yeah, I'm pretty easy. So that makes sense. What about Stassi? Like, did you get that cold shoulder from her? Well, I never really got to hang out with Stassi a lot. I got closer with Bo first. You know, I, I feel like I got closer with the boys first. You know, Bo is definitely someone that I've hung out with. You know, I've gone to a, a Rams game with him before and this and that. And I think the one, I think the, you know, where uh, Stassi and I's relationship kind of was solidified was in Vegas. You know, we, we were around, we had to be around each other for a couple of days. And hopefully I made a good impression on her, you know, and yeah, you know, so hopefully we're cool now. I just, they just got their, especially Saucy and Bo, they're kind of still busy and doing their, what they're doing. So I really haven't been able to create a relationship with them yet, you know, but Bo definitely I have, but with Saucy, it's a little harder. That girl's busier than most. She is. And so it sounds like you fell in with the old, the OG boys, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. What about Kristen? Any relationship with her? Oh, I love Kristen. Kristen's amazing. I, I, I honestly love Kristen. Um, I love Kristen too. I, I fucking love Kristen. She is so, I, she's so positive and sweet and like kind and she, uh, yeah, I, I have nothing. I can't even imagine talking poorly about that girl. She is so sweet to everybody. I don't understand even the people that don't like her. It's just kind of like, what the fuck are you talking about? She's the coolest chick ever. So oh. I was going to say, like, do you have any thoughts on, like, Stassi and, like, Katie kind of, you know, not inviting her to the wedding and just they're kind of over her? Like, any thoughts on that? Um, that's not, honestly, that I don't know much about that, and that's not really my business, you know? I don't know. what I don't even know where their animosity towards each other begins, honestly. So that's just not – that's not my – I you know, I – I can't even like when Schwartz talks to me about it, I'm like, dude, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, dude. I don't even know how to help you or how, how to help this situation. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know much and I don't know why they're, they're not getting along. You know, that's, I think that's like, that's years of, of something built up, I'm assuming. So it's just not my place. Totally. And what yeah. about Charlie? Cause she's really kind of the one that came in not knowing anybody and just kind of started working there. And then the next thing you know, she was on camera. Is yeah, she- I, don't, I mean, yeah, I've, I've, I only, I've only met Charlie a couple times. I don't really know her either. Um, she is, a, she is pretty sweet. Um, she does. Uh, there are some things that she says that concern me, <laughs> that are just funny. It's just like it's the shit she says. I'm like, are you being serious? Or are you joking? Like, I just don't know anymore. But she's, she's sweet. But it's also, it's also one of those things thrown in the mix that doesn't make sense sometimes, you know. But she is a sweetheart. I can, I can give her that. She just doesn't eat pasta. Yeah, which is the strange. I feel like even like I, who did what? Yeah, I don't know. Yes, literally, you boil noodles and you throw red sauce on it. Who does, has not had that? That's like that's a five dollar meal right there. Seriously, I have no idea who does the, not have the that. Broke, the, the broke college student is eating pasta and ramen noodles every night. So like, it's just pretty much. I don't know. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. now, now that the show is out, you know, it's airing. Like yes. Danica called you a fuck boy putting that aside like are you like happy you know like do you see parts of the show you're like oh god I can't believe I said that or like this is edited a certain way and that's not really how I wanted to be portrayed or are you just kind of like um, no this is great no I definitely had my moments I think the first couple up like even you know until recently I've been I get really um in my feelings and emotional and sometimes depressed because 
some of the things that were said about me behind my back. I'm like, what the, like, it bummed me out because I'm like, it's not true. I'm not this person. I'm not that person. Um, I'm, I've always, like, it's just kind of like, it's just lame. It's like, you know, I, when people are so cool to you to your face and then behind your back on camera, they're saying all this shit and you're just like, what, where does this come from? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just lame. I feel kind of picked on at points and for no reason. I've been so kind to everybody, especially Danica. I call me a fuck boy and like screaming at me for this and that, doing this and that. You know, I'm like, dude, what, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I, I've never yelled at you or been rude to you in my life or even talk shit about you. Totally. And you're being like, you're, you're like, it's, I just feel picked on some of these episodes. I'm just getting yelled at and called names and creating stories about me being a cheater or this and that. I'm like, dude, I, this is all so inaccurate of what you're saying, Danica. You need to get your facts straight because at the end of the day, people take, you know, they're watching a show and they're taking it seriously and they're going to have their opinions about me now. And, and I hate that because that's not what happened right how right now that's true and how has this affected your dating life like has it been positive or negative you know i would assume like a lot of girls are slipping into your dm because you are on a show yeah no honestly um i've had a lot more negatives with it than i have positive i definitely have girls that you know that hit me up all the time or this and that you know it's just inevitable for being on tv but i mean the girls that i've actually been interested in that i've talk to they find out that i'm on the show then they watch it and they're like oh you're this guy and then i uh, then they stop talking to me you know what i mean like it's just it, honestly it sucks because how can someone move on and never be in a relationship if i'm and and not be portrayed as this person if i can't even get in a relationship you know what i mean yeah so right like you're meeting these is. girls that yeah, you're interested you know, in and they're like we just saw you on tv and this is what you're being called and this is what this one's saying and they're yeah, just yeah like, you uh, know and I, I, I don't like to pay attention to the girls that had know me from the show. I'd like to talk to girls that are like, oh, you're like, that, like find it out like later on and I'm, I'm communicating with them. That's kind of like what I like because I don't want to talk about the show. I don't, I don't want them to know. I really don't. I'm not proud of it. So, or proud of the things I've done. I'm proud to be on, on Vanderpump Rules. Absolutely. I'm not, you know, there are some things that like make me look bad. I'm like, I don't want them to know this. Right. So, um, yeah, you know, it just, sometimes it just happens. They'll be like, I, I'll be talking. I, it's like multiple, it's like doing like three different girls. I'm just like trying to like, you know, have like riff off with and have a conversation, get to know. And they're like, Oh, I just my mom's house and you're on the TV. I'm like, Oh fuck. Great. Sick. Not at all what I wanted, but. Right. Like in an ideal world, you get to know them first and then be like, Oh yeah, by the way, I'm on this show because I work at this. Yeah. Bar. I manage yeah. this bar. So, I don't mm-hmm. know. Who knows? What about like Jackson, Brittany? Do you have a lot of interaction with them or do you? Um, yeah, Jax, Jackson and I, our relationship uh, starts off a little slow. He, you know, he was he was really busy with Brittany this year, you know, getting his wedding going and this and that. And he came to the Tom Tom every once in a while. And I didn't really know who he, like, who he was at first. And so it, our, our Jackson and I's relationship started off very slow, but we're cool. And um, yeah. yeah. And what about the joy and gift from above that is Lisa Vanderpump? Tell me about Lisa. I mean, I've met her, like, briefly a few times, but, like, t- tell yeah. me about the well, gift. Yeah, Lisa and I, well, Lisa, you know, obviously from the beginning, being work, running one of her restaurants, very intimidating. I was terrified to ever be in the same room as her because all I wanted to do was impress her. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to make sure that I looked good and that I was working hard because that's what she wants, you know what I mean? And uh, I was, yeah, I was very terrified at first. We didn't get, like... One thing I've realized about her relationship is that she's, you know, you know when Lisa likes you when she's comfortable enough to give you, you know, the two the two kisses on the cheek kind of thing. And I didn't get to that point in my in our relationship till like like very late in the year. You know what I mean? I when I saw her all the time. You know what I mean? Because she had she didn't she didn't know me. I didn't know her. She had to see how I work. You know what I mean? It was a relationship that took a while to kind of uh, build. But now I can say we have a, an amazing relationship. She, you know, it's like everyone says it's like a mother figure to us and she's you know very involved and yeah and when she when so. she comes into the restaurant or tom tom or whatever is there just like uh does everyone hold their breath of like lisa's here yeah it definitely is it definitely is um uh there, there's some psychotic moments with some guests you know what i mean but it's you know she creates that that's what that's the what she has going for her you know what i mean she's a she's a very powerful when the yeah when she walks in the room you can feel her presence you can literally feel it you know what I mean? So, yeah, it definitely is a, a thing. And the guests just go, like, absolutely insane. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely, definitely. So, I mean, ima- yeah, like, imagine you're from, like, Arkansas or whatever you referenced before, and then you're there, and then in walks Lisa. You're probably ready to pass out. 
Yeah, and they're in there and they're in the restaurants all the time. So, you know, they're either at Perps, Pump Sir, Tom Tom all the time. So there you'll definitely if you're in, in one of the restaurants, you'll you'll bump into her at some point. What is like the best part of it working at Tom Tom? Um God, there's so many great things, you know. I mean, this the energy that's there is so much fun. You know, we have great music, the drinks are awesome, my staff is incredible, my bar team, my server team, everyone works so hard. Even my busters to bar backs, they're they're absolutely incredible. Um, it's actually makes me bummed out because I miss them like crazy right now during this quarantine. I really do. We're one big family and, um, it's just the energy these are just, you know, I, I, and I, I can confidently say that it was me and my, my management team that created that, you know, we created a, uh, a great energy for my staff to want to come to work there. Uh, we can work with them. They can work with us. You know what I mean? And that makes that creates a good environment. You know what I mean? If you might, if I can make my staff happy, they'll make the guests happy. It's a, it's a pyramid. So um, I think Tom Tom has a great energy and, and I'm, we're working on it every day. We definitely have a lot more to work on. You know, we just doubled in size and expanded recently That's um, great. and we're really busy and we're jamming and it's, you know, it's a great environment. It really is. And I highly recommend everyone just to give us a chance, you know? So what happens after this? So now, I mean, the state shut you guys down. I mean, New York is the same, yeah. like every restaurant is shut, you know, like there's all this stuff in the world of, I mean, honestly, I have no idea. I would assume when we get out of this, a lot of the restaurants in New York are just going to be gone. Uh, you know, like, I'm hoping that, you know, we've got a, uh, we got approved for a couple small loans to help the restaurants stay open. You know, I'm hoping that all my staff is on unemployment because unemployment uh, rates aren't that bad right now. You're getting an extra $600 with your weekly payments or whatever. I don't, you know, I haven't gotten mine yet. I'm waiting on my unemployment on top of, uh, you know, the stimulus check. I just say, you know, I hope everyone is doing okay, but, I don't know what, what, when we're going to open. I don't know the answer for that. You know, every day it changes. I mean, it does. They said May, you know, they said May 15th that we're, that we're looking at. And then that was extended a week, you know, two weeks ago. Oh, so really? I don't know. Yeah. Oh. It's like, it's just, it keeps moving out. You know, they're like, Oh, April 30th. And then all of a sudden it's I May know. 15th. So I don't, I don't have answers. I don't know. I'm just more concerned about my staff because, you know, restaurant industry, a lot of people either make really good money, which they do, but sometimes, you know, some of them live paycheck to paycheck, man. And so that's another reason. I don't know if you heard that Tom and Tom raised money for, you know, Tom and Tom and they, they donated money to all the staff. So that was really great of them. Oh, really? T tell me yeah. about that. I like didn't hear about that yet. Yeah. So is Tom it through Stanley Cameo? I is yeah. It, oh, okay. So they, they, they got a cameo and they um they donated all the money that they made fifty thousand dollars. It's in three weeks. We donated to all uh, every per, every staff member got seven hundred and twenty five dollars. You know, it's not it's it's every dollar counts and like I couldn't be more like that's amazing. You know what I mean? That's really great that they did that. So it's that times are tough for everybody. So Sandoval and Shores took it in their own hands to make sure that everyone got some money. That's amazing. They just did yeah. cameos and every cameo they got over three weeks they donated. Yeah. Yeah, wow. every dollar uh, they donated. And so they, yeah, they sat in their living room and played music and created a whole vibe for like three weeks. They did like, you know, they dedicated their time to this. And it was really cool that they did that. You know what I mean? I mean, so, it kind of so makes sense. I mean, why more people aren't, it makes sense because you're home. Why not do these cameos? I saw something about this and I saw one or two of the cameos. They were like amazing. Like yeah, one had Schwartz yeah. in it and then Sandoval just like appeared out of nowhere. And I'm like, whoever got this cameo is probably going crazy right now. Yeah, I know they really they really got creative with it, you know, like Sanimal went to his storage unit and got every instrument out that he's ever Sanimal is very talented in playing music. So like he's playing guitar, the trumpet, the ba you know what I mean? He has short singing, they're dancing, like they're having fun with it, you know, and that's really cool for fans to do that. But on top of the day, they're helping out Tom Tom, you know, the staff. That's so, amazing. Really cool, yeah. yeah. And so the plan is like whenever we get out just to go back to Tom Tom and it's business as that's usual once it gets up up and running yeah I, and i and i feel you know i i hope that uh all the other restaurants sir and pump and villa blanca you know it's just it's a lot it's a lot of a lot of land that they own that's going to be very stressful to open back up so a lot hopefully with these, yeah hopefully with these small business loans and everything we can get back to j jamming again you know i really hope so have you heard from ken and lisa during this or like have they reached out to like tom and tom or um, I've, uh, Lisa texted us the other night, um, after the Vegas episode and said how much she missed us and everything, you know, in the group chat with all the uh, cast. So that was really nice of her, you know, because we had a great time in Vegas all together. And she's like, you know, this episode made me miss you guys and blah, blah. blah. So that was really sweet. That is sweet. So yeah. yeah, hopefully, hopefully it'll open and everything will go back to 
the way it is. I know they they do keep extending it. Like I try not to watch the news yeah. every day. Because- oh my god, the news just stresses me out. I I, I want to stay informed of what's going on and what we shouldn't be shouldn't do when we go outdoors if we have to this and that. But like the statistics that I'm seeing of death rates and who has it, it's just I don't know. It just it just pains me, man. I don't even know if I want to know these things. You know what I mean? So. That's why yeah. I stopped watching. I'm like, they keep quoting the numbers every day in New York. And I'm like, these numbers are so high. Like, I don't even want to see this. And enough people yeah. tell me what's going on. But I, I heard May 15th, too, which yeah. that seems like so close by. Like, I mean, it seems very optimistic, I thought. It does. I mean, if if, if everyone does what they're supposed to do and doesn't, you know, keeps washing their hands, wearing masks when they go out, I mean... I have a box of gloves by my front door and then in my car. So as I get to my car, I can change my gloves and then go grocery shopping. You know, it's just what we have to do right now. It sucks. You know, I've been, I've been, going, I've been going out like once every 10 days, literally just for food. And that's it. And then I come right yeah. back home. I'm like, I, I don't want to be out anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's wild. We went, I went from being a five-year-old kid, being able to eat dog food as, as you know, as a joke. And then now I can even touch a doorknob without a glove on. So <laughs> Hopefully when we get out, like that, that's what I'm more depressed about. Like I'm depressed more like the afterthought, like I'm like a hugger. I like to do the double kisses. Like I I, I don't want to get out of here and like have to distance. I mean, I mean, just, you know, prior to this whole thing, I was just getting, you know, I was, I'm starting, you know, I'm at Tom Tom every night. I'm taking photos of fans and doing this and that I'm getting hugs. And I was like, I'm terrified to almost go back and have to do that, to be honest. Like, you know what I mean? Like, is it really going to be safe? Is it not? Do we really know? Do I have to be the asshole that says I'm not taking photos right now? I don't know what to do. You know what I mean? And I, it's it's a it's gonna be a weird situation for sure. I know that's the thing. And so to that point, like, did you notice that like before we got in quarantine, like right away after like the second episode, first episode, like, you know, like I'm sure your followers went right. I mean, the power of TV, especially like a show like Vanderpump Rules, yeah. is just huge. I think it was a slow start. I think a lot of fans still were focusing in on the on the OGs and were really recognizing us, which is totally understandable and this and that. But I think as we got deeper into the episode, definitely I was getting noticed at Tom Tom taking photos all the time, um, meeting an awesome fans that were just stoked to be there. You know, it, it's yeah, it was it was it's definitely it's definitely different for sure. And do you ever like? I mean, I when no one would fault you for it, but like you know, you look at like a Stassi, a Bu- Chris. A, 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 any of them they have these houses now i mean they're making bank and they weren't so like does it ever like do you ever jump there i mean i would i'd be like okay i could be fucking with my mindset thinking that one day i could have that yeah Uh, yeah yeah i mean like i said my goal in life is to open my own bars and have them you know multiple so let's say the show didn't work out i'm very confident saying that with my with my education that I have in the bar and restaurant scene and this and that, that I know that I will be successful regardless of a TV show. Is it a blessing that I'm on it? Absolutely. I do hope that I do have those opportunities like Stassi and Kristen and Sandoval. And everyone has a beautiful home now and, you know, and has, you know, can live a nice life. And I definitely want that, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm confident in manifesting that I will have that regardless of how my life pans out with Vanderpump Rules. You know, That's I'm a businessman. Yeah, you know, I, I, I can, I, I'm going to be successful regardless. And like, not that you don't have a good life now, like you're in an apartment, like. Yeah, I know, you know, yeah, life's great. Like I'm very, you know, everything's good. I mean, unfortunately I'm not working so life isn't too great. I don't have money coming in right now, but you know, it's, it's, everything's going to be okay. You know, I really just got to, just got to be positive and, and manifest everything and just speak it out in the world. And, you know, if you, if you, yeah, you just got to just be positive. And that's just what I do every day. I just manifest things. I write it down. I write it on my mirror with a, with a sharp, not a Sharpie with a, a whiteboard eraser, you know, a thing I, I write on my, my mirror, my, my goals. And I look at it every day and, and hopefully they come true. And some of them do, and some of them don't. And that's just part of life. See, you're very down to earth and you have a good head on your shoulders, which that's a, hopefully a side that people will see from this interview. You know, I don't yeah. know if they, I- like, what do you, like, is there anything else you want to leave us with? Like, what do you think people haven't gotten from you on the show? Like, I think, you know, like I said, I think some of the girls having the uh, the wrong stories about me have made people not like me, think that I'm a douche or this and that, or like, you know, the whole banning Danica from the restaurant thing. It wasn't a banning Danica. It was just like, I wanted the 86 er and it was, she made, I mean, at the end of the day, she made me uncomfortable when she was there. You know, if she was there, I didn't want to see her. She disrespected my staff at some point. 
it wasn't even about her and I, but it was. It definitely was rooted. It was being selfish and greedy. I can totally admit that as I did on camera. I was like, I just don't like this girl right now. I don't want to see her in Tom Tom. I don't like her. And it could it was definitely immature and I shouldn't have done that. And but at the same time, it was just like I just want to I just want to run Tom Tom and go home at night and not have any. I just I don't want drama right now. You know what I mean? It's that makes stressful, sense. you know, running the business on top of being yelled at by somebody and doing this. that it's just It's a lot. It's very overwhelming. <laughs> You know, and doing it while on TV. I mean, as great yeah. as it is to be on TV, it does add a layer of like, this is my real job. I have to do yeah. it. And there's cameras. Yeah, everywhere. I have to be there. I have to be there every night. And, you know, and I'm there long hours and I'm I'm trying my best to keep a smile on my face. And sometimes I go into work in a very poor mood and I, I hate that. And um, yeah, you know, I just anyways, yeah, I just want to leave off with people with just understanding that, you know, there are some things that aren't true and that were maybe portrayed a little incorrectly. and hopefully coming into Tom Tom and meeting me one day or even me being on the show more. And, you know, that they'll understand that this isn't what really was the truth and how, what happened. You know what I mean? So that's good. That's great. Yeah. And where, where can people find you on social media if they're looking for you? Uh, I have Instagram. It's going to be, uh, you can just look up Max Boynes. I'm sure that'll come up or it's going to be, uh, I S S a Maximilian. It's a Maximilian. It's a riff off a, a hip hop song that I like. So, um, yeah, it's just, um, yeah, you can find me there. And yeah. I'm also that's doing good. cameos as well. If anyone wants to look me up on cameos, um, that's great. I would love to say happy birthday or say hello. What so is you your rate on cameo? Well. My rate on cameo is $10, but you're more in the public eye than me. So what is your um, rate? Hey, honestly, we're not too far from me. I'm cheaper than a 30 racket at, at, at the grocery store. So I'm only $25. You know, I want to make it simple and cheap for people. I'm not trying to rip anybody off. I'm just here to say hello, happy birthday anything you guys want so you know look me up that's awesome and, yeah yeah and you you and i could dm later yeah perfect i'm yeah, gonna be trapped great. inside so i really appreciate you joining us max thank Absolutely. you so much Thanks for having me, david i appreciate you you'll have to come back on like as the season like maybe 10 episodes from now you'll come back on and chat yeah. with us hopefully when this is all done i'll be in new york one day and i'll be able to meet you in person and do all this so i would we'll love to do we'll definitely have drinks in new york afterwards too all right i love it sounds good david that would be awesome. Thank you so much. Thank oh, wait, you. you know what? Wait, before yeah. you leave, I just thought of this. I need to take screenshots of us. I'm really losing my, sorry. Uh, Let me do another one. No, you're okay. Trust me, I get it. I'm really losing my touch over here. All right, go ahead. Hold on, sorry, sorry. I'm pushing this away from us. That's awesome. I'll send you the best ones. Okay, great. Thank All you right, so David. much. Okay, bye. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Awesome, bye. Bye.